In this tutorial, we're going to be covering kind of the basics of Rhino operation. And to do that, we're going to have to actually work with some geometry. Now, as mentioned in the first tutorial, there are lots of ways to come up and use the menus or toolbars to create curves, lines, surfaces, and solids. But really, the best way I know how is to use the command line. So what you can see here are the four views. We have our top view, front view, right view, and perspective view. Using right click in any of these views lets us pan left and right, up and down. Right click in perspective is our orbit tool. It's a different way to move. Using shift and right click initiates the pan only in perspective. I can also use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out on any one of these views, and I can use left click to select things. If I drag here in this perspective view, I'll show you. If I drag from left to right, you'll notice that that window right now is a solid square. That means that anything fully contained in that square will be selected. If I drag from right to left, you'll see that it's a dotted square, and that means anything it touches, even if it's not fully contained, will be selected inside of that square. It doesn't matter if I drag from the bottom or to the top, it's always left to right or right to left. So let's take a look at how we might use that. Up in the command line, I'm going to type line. Line is just a really simple command. And the thing I want to point out is that the command prompt will always ask you for more information or instruct you on what you need to do. So right now it's asking me to click the start of the line. Well, I can do that in our top view, front view, or right view. And I can switch between views as I click. So the start of the line, I'm going to say here, I'll left click. And you can see, because I have ortho turned on at the bottom, I can only uh, drag at 90 degree increments. So 0, 90, 180, 270, and 0. If I turn ortho off by clicking it here, I can drag anywhere I'd like. Similarly, I can use shift to tab that on and off. So right now, ortho's on because I'm holding shift. If I let go of shift, I'm back to ortho being turned off. I can click my second endpoint, say, somewhere here. Now this line is just arbitrarily made, right? I clicked a start point and I clicked an endpoint. And that doesn't really have that much precision. But now that it's there, I can click on that object and select it. If uh, we drag from right to left, even though that line's not fully contained, it will still select. If I deselect it, click escape sometimes is helpful, I can drag from left to right, and you can see here my square crosses it, but it does not fully contain the line, so it will not select that line. I have to drag and fully contain that line for it to be selected if I drag from left to right. Next, let's look how we might zoom in. So I can use the mouse wheel to just zoom in on that line, but I can also use zoom commands. So if I click this object and type the command zoom, I can go and look at the command line. I can zoom all, dynamic, extents, factor, in, out, or selected. Selected will zoom in on the object or objects you have selected. So let's use zoom selected. And the sh uh, key shortcut for that is the S, enter. So there's zoom selected, I'm zoomed in on that object. I can uh, repeat those shortcuts by hitting Z, Enter, S, Enter. In this view, now I'm zoomed in there. And really, I could use Z, S and zoom in on all of these views. So now we're looking just at that line. Let's make another line by typing line. And we're going to use our O snaps. So O snaps down here are turned on. And right now, it says I can snap to the end point, a near point, point, mid, knot, or vertex. I can turn these on and off as I choose. Right now, let's look at how we might snap to an endpoint. So here in perspective, I'll use right click to orbit around. I'll zoom in. And over on this side, I can see now as my mouse gets close, it snaps to the endpoint of that line. If I'm along it, it'll snap to near that line, meaning it'll create a point near right there. It's actually on the line. If I move down a bit further, at some point, we should get the midpoint there. And we can jump down to this endpoint here. Let's grab this endpoint by left clicking. I'll orbit again and I'll drag up. Holding shift, I can lock in to just the vertical. And this time, instead of just arbitrarily kick, clicking a distance, let's type five feet, enter. Now holding shift, I will drag up at only five feet. 
I'll left click and there's my five foot line segment. I can go again and type line one more time. This time I'm going to drag and you'll see there I am actually using the uh, smart track. So because I started at this endpoint, uh, if I hover over it, there's a guide that shows us I'm drawing um, horizontally on the x-axis from that point. You can click to there. And again, this line no longer has a given length. There are different ways we can change that, but the best way to always work is to, to define the distance you're going for. This time, I'm going to drag along that line again, and I'll say 15 feet, enter. You can see now I have a much longer line, but I do have another line underneath it. I can prove that by dragging from left to right, and I'll see that it selects that line segment and this line segment here. If I want to deselect the line segment, I can use Control and click it, and it will deselect whatever line I just clicked. If I want to add a line segment, I can use Shift and click a line. Now I have two line segments selected, and I can see in my object properties I have two open curves. Let's say that I want to get rid of this one curve that's overlapped. What I'm going to do is use Control and click on that line segment. That deselected the top line, the newest line. But let's say that I didn't want to go through all that. If I click in an area where there's multiple pieces of geometry, and by using left click, it'll bring up my selection menu. And the selection menu lets me pick which curve I'm looking at. This one here, the bottom one, is the oldest geometry. It's the one that's kind of been covered over. If I wanted the top one, I could click this one here. It's on top. Sometimes it takes a little bit, and especially, let's see here, let's go to our layers. Right now, layer 5, uh, its display color is white. If I change that to, say, um, red, it's a little bit easier to understand because when we click an object, you can see it becomes highlighted. There's the second curve there, and then I can use my delete button to remove it. Now I have three clean line segments with no double geometry here. I can grab these line segments and use things like group to make them a group. I can ungroup them by typing ungroup. I can grab them all and join them. Joining them makes them an open uh, polyline. So I've got three line segments here that I can create um, as, as, as kind of uh, now one piece of geometry. This is a single open curve. We'll continue working with curves, polylines, and uh, joining geometry in our next tutorial. The last thing I want to look at while we're here is the middle click menu. If I push down on the middle mouse button, the scroll wheel, you can see I have some kind of uh, geometry that are selection tools that we can use right here, one of which is zoom extents. The other here are display modes that we're going to need to move to solid or surface modeling before we can actually use them. Lastly, I can go in and use the show hide button to hide objects. So although it's gone, that button or that geometry, that open curve is still there. I can use the middle mouse button again and drop down and use the turn on light bulb to show. Or if I hide this using the command hide, I can then type show. That'll bring it back. Similarly, I can use lock and the command unlock to lock and unlock geometry. You can do that too with the middle mouse click button. Lastly, and most importantly, the middle mouse click gives you a quick access to save. You can also use the command save or click the save button here or up in file and save. Saving is what I encourage you to do early and often. In the next tutorial, we'll be looking at further tools to create polylines, open and closed curves, and surfaces.